Hi, welcome to my automotive show KG Canadian Enthusiast. Before start the show, I want to hit the like button and subscribe to my show. Now let's get started. Today on the show, we're going to talk about lots of vehicles for the ultra rich and affordability and some surprises on the side. Now let's get started. Now as you all know the Toyota Land Cruise or the J300 is finally launched and all of our previous thoughts are now absolutely true. So let's uh, I'm not going to waste too much time on the engine stuff. It's the same 400 and four, same 409 horsepower twin turbo V6 and the 304 horsepower V6 turbo diesel. There's nothing new on that. And the same 10 speed automatic. Some markets might get the 4 liter V6 and a 6 speed automatic which I'm not so sure about yet. Now what the big Big surprise is that there's a GR Sport model available. That is pretty badass. I saw the look of the GR Sport and I see Toyota nailed the design of the Land Cruiser. And the GR Sport model really showcases that with, with updated suspension and it makes even more off-road capable than it ever needs to be. But the trim level I'm more interested in is the ZX trim, the VIP Ultra Luxury trim, which I'm truly in love with. And that trim looks truly brilliant. And the interior has a 10 plus 2 infotainment, uh, infotainment screen and such that and plenty of luxury and comfort features, electric seats and etc. And this thing has so many features, this makes you think why would you even buy a BMW X7, get, get a Land Cruiser. And there is something else important, if there is a new Land Cruiser, there is a new Lexus LX. Now that is something I will talk about later in this video. Now prices wise, the Land Cruiser We'll start around $80,000 in my guess go all the way up to $100,000 or more. The price is depending on region to region. Now, the, now North America doesn't matter because the Land Cruise is no longer sold. But I would guess it's a high, around, around, around $80,000 to $100,000 or more. That is my guess. Now if on the Land Cruise that did meet the expectations, let's talk about the Ford F-150 Raptor. The F-150 Raptor is now launched. But we know the power outputs for the standard Raptor. Now the standard Raptor makes the same 450 horsepower from the same 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. While the power doesn't change, it gains more torque. That means it's wonderfully good off-road racing, even better. But there is something else that you have to think about the Raptor, of course. There is that the Raptor, there is a fast Raptor that's coming called the Raptor R, which will make around 760 horsepower from a 5.2 liter supercharged V8, which is going to be pretty exciting because that's more than the Ram 1500 TRX. Prices wise, 60 plus to 70 thousand dollars most likely, and it's definitely and it's 10 grand more than a F150 trimmer. Something you should consider. I can't wait to look at the F150. I can't wait to imagine the Raptor R is going to be like. Now moving on from that. The facelifted BMW X3 and the X4 makes its debut. Now both X3 and X4 gets updated exterior styling, updated interior, large infotainment system, updated suspension and more torque and updated engines for full emissions. You know all these are great. Now let me give you some specifications about the X3 and the X4. Uh, for the X3 first. The entry level model is a 3 liter inline 6 turbo diesel. These are the engines I am more focused about. A 3 liter inline 6 turbo diesel, 282 horsepower. A 2 liter plug in hybrid with 293 horsepower. This engine is not available on the X4. And a 3 liter inline 6 turbo diesel with 335 horsepower. That's the, the, that's the M40D. And you get the M50. Then you get the M40I, which is a 3 liter inline 6 twin turbo inline 6 with 355 horsepower. Then you get the then you get the Alpina models of course in Alpina you get a 3 liter mild hybrid turbo diesel with 350 horsepower to a cot turbo diesel with 389 horsepower which is very exciting then you get the usual X3 and then you get the usual X3M and the X3M competition with 503 horsepower and 473 uh, horsepower and if you get the M driver package, you can get the top speed up to 173 miles per hour. If not, it's usually 155 miles per hour. I thought you should know. Now, prices wise, I would guess the X3 and the X4 will start from 48,000 pounds to well over 100,000 pounds. That is my rather guess. Remember, the X4 doesn't come with the hybrid. So, that's something to deeply consider. Now, moving on with the X3 and X4. Let's talk about the all new Lexus NX. The wait is over. The NX has been launched and now you can have four different models to choose from in the NX. There would be five when you put a Chinese specification in between. 
Now let's talk about you can have uh, NX250, uh, NX350H, NX350 and NX450H for the very first time. Let's talk about engines. You get a base 2.5 to 4 cylinder with 203 horsepower, a 2.5 hybrid with 239 horsepower, to, to, to a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine with, three, with 274 horsepower. That's a lot actually. And then the hybrid, same as the RAV4 Prime, same, but I'm fine with that. It's a 2.5 to 4 cylinder plug in hybrid with 302 horsepower. That is insane. Now, of, of course, other specifications are you can have the F Sport trim, of course, and every model you choose from, except for the base model, I think, 5 SUV and of course 5, 6, 4 wheel drive, 8 speed automatic, or a CVT for the hybrids or the plug in hybrids. Prices, I would guess, starts from $40 thousand dollars to sixty thousand plus dollars and crucial news and the touchpad is gone it's now a full touch screen and a large 10.3 inch infotainment system something to consider on the nx so moving on from the nx let's talk about the on let, let's talk about the Vauxhall grand land it's the Vauxhall's mid-size i would call it compact suv based on the peugeot 3008 and the citroen c5 air cross now, it, it, it has a tremendous styling update, which makes it, I think, look significantly better, of course. But something else you should consider that it doesn't have the letter X anymore. It's called the Grand Land without the X. Just the letter change. Apart from that, no changes report. Same engines as previously. 1.6 diesel, 2 liter diesel, 2 plug-in hybrid prices. 22,000 pounds to 34,000 pounds. Now, I'm going to two more vehicles. Actually, three more vehicles to talk about. The Kia K5. Now, the Kia K5 now has all-wheel drive available on the base models. Uh, base models like the like the LXS and GT Line and EX. Now, it does give the K5 extra layer options, which is important for a mid-size car these days. Prices, 20 plus thousand dollars to 30 plus thousand, something you should consider. Jaguar revealed the face different I-Pace for the North American market, only with one trim, that's the top of the line HSE which cost $71,000. Again, the iPace is a design icon and I truly love it. Now, on so many vehicles we talked about, now let's talk about the all new launch once more. It's the VW T7, the replacement for the T6, of course, is here. The T6 production continues for, for commercial cargo models, of course. The T7 is their family-friendly premium luxury van, which competes against things like the Toyota Hiace and that sort of stuff. Just like the IS, you get lots of trim levels. They haven't specified, but I guess they are a lot. And also, extremely flexible interior with extremely ultra luxurious interior. I've seen it. I'm very well impressed. And I would say this in Asia, vans and luxury MPVs have replaced luxury cars. And I'm not joking. And they truly deserve to be. And of course, specs 1.5 liter force in a turbo TSI with 134 horsepower to a 2 liter TDI oil burner. 140 horsepower to a TSI with 201 to a first time ever a plug-in hybrid with 215 horsepower based on the 1.4 TSI. Prices will start from $50,000. I would guess, I would think prices will start from £50,000 or higher because this thing is a truly a proper ultra luxurious limousine indeed. I think you should consider that significantly. On that note, and before I leave one more vehicle, the Honda Mobila is a subcompact luxury MPV that's available in the Asian markets, but for my Asian viewers, it's available at the 1.5 to 4 senior range with 117 horsepower. It's been sold since 2014. I recommend you to buy the Honda Mobila if you're living in Asia. On that note, I'm going to end the video. Thank you very much for joining me on this show. Thank you very much.